the same sums up about You know, today I was, yesterday I was worried about getting a haircut. I was like, I got to get a haircut. I'm not going to be in my pulpit. I got to get a haircut. I got to do something, you know. I, I got a natural 0.5 up top because the hair don't want to grow. And then I got a natural about one on the sides because my hair really don't want to grow. And, and so I couldn't get a, well, the barbers weren't really barbering when I went outside because I, I went outside too late. And uh, I didn't really want to leave the house yesterday, and then I was going to do it myself, and then I was like, I, I don't feel like doing it myself. And I thought to myself, you know, when Paul was traversing and preaching in, in, in Asia, modern-day Turkey, I imagine he didn't have the two on the top with the faded taper and the ball fade on the side. I imagine his hair was probably not the most well kept, you know? So I figured I could get away from preaching today without getting a haircut because many of men have done so. That's right. And so why do I bring this up? Yeah. Why do I bring this up? It's a mind thing. And so I'm gonna take my cue off of the leader of our church. You know, this is a mind thing. In my mind, the first thing I thought is, I got to get a haircut. I gotta look good. I gotta Make sure that I'm presentable. While that was in the forefront of my mind, you know, I thought it, but I didn't really think it as much was, nah, what I really need to do is make sure the word I'm about to preach is accurate, sure, and give glory to God. That's really what I got to do, right? As, as a preacher, what I have to do is do what's right by God. I don't have to get the haircut and get the line up on the beard, get my mustache trimmed down a little bit, trimmed up above the lip, you know, I don't have to do that. And so it, it made me go, well, what is my mind thinking? And so I don't really have a name for this sermon. I, I, if I had the name, it, it would be a sermon on the sermon. That's a sermon the, the sermon on the sermon. And I'm actually going to start in Romans chapter 12. I'm going to work my way to the actual verse I'm going to be coming from. And so Romans chapter 12, a very familiar verse for us believers. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and subject to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may Learn what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, why do I start there? Because to be a living sacrifice, to be holy and acceptable to God, your spiritual worship requires a renewal of your mind that makes you non-conformant with this world. Amen. Amen. The only way you can be within the will of God, acting within the will of God, doing that which is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God is by not being conformed to this world and by having your mind renewed. Yeah. So, when we think about the mind, as pastors have been preaching for months now, we think to ourselves, something has to change. Because the mind always thinks about me, 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 and me. The mind is always thinking about me. Mm -hmm. My precious little nine was two years old, and guess what? When she sees me with some juice, guess what? It's her juice. Yeah. When she sees me with my blanket and I'm comfortable, guess what? <laughs> it's her blanket. Yeah. Why? Because her mind is conditioned to me. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it is. Right? When, mm -hmm. when my, my little son Emery sees me eating something I like to eat, yeah. He goes, mmm, that's my favorite. He doesn't know what it is. He has no idea what it is. But to him, it's his favorite. Why? Because 
He wants it. So the mind is naturally conditioned to me. Yeah. Like the paperwork that Pastor gave us to talk about the noetic effects of the fall, which is the way the mind changed due to the effects of sin. The effects of sin is something that carries our mind not from doing that which is right by God, where Adam was commissioned, hey, go forth and take care of the garden and name the animals and spread across the earth. The mind changed from that and went to a me aspect. Well, I gotta take care of me. If you actually go to Genesis chapter 4, I beseech you one day, go read Genesis chapter 4, read it from this thought. Me, 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 me. Because that's what happened with Cain and Abel. <laughs> Cain's problem was he had a me problem. Right. And God came to him and said, Sin is knocking at your door. It wants to sip you as me. Right? It wants to control you, it wants to take over you. Mm-hmm. And it can take over you very easily because your mind is already conditioned to be me. Yeah. And then when you read about the descendants of Cain, you read and go, well, it doesn't look that bad. You know, one actually founded music, one was a blacksmith. All right, one did have a couple of wives. You know, that probably isn't good. You know, mm-hmm. Lamech. And Lamech talks about how well, if Cain got seven, then I get seven times sevenfold and whatever. What you see is there is a me problem. The focus of the individual upon itself problem. There's a pride problem. The mind is naturally prideful. What can pride be defined by? Pride can be defined by this. Self-idolatry. Ah, go ahead. When you worship yourself. Go ahead. All right. That's I right. can be very prideful. I know I can. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, this points in Florida where I look and I say, man, this thing didn't go my way. Man, them heathens didn't go, them heathens came up against me. Them fools did this, they did this, and they did that. But then I had to look back and go, well, did I give them occasion to do it? I did. Was I prideful in the way I handled some things? I was. And so we get the whole little feeling, oh, well, you know, they came up against the shot of God. No, 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 don't go run into the clutches of God. Well, you know you did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Ah. All right, it's like, it'll be like my son punches somebody in the face, and then when the little boy tries to punch him back, he wants me like that, he's trying to punch him. Mm-hmm. You know what you did. Yeah, that's right. No, nah, he's going to protect you. But I'll, I'll, I'll be like that, you know? And so we have to be mindful of the fact that, that our spiritual worship comes as a sacrifice. What are we sacrificing? We are sacrificing the meanness. If that's a word, if I can use that as a word. M-E-N-E-S-S. It's probably not a word. I'm going to use it. The meanness. we got to sacrifice our meanness. Right. How do we sacrifice our meanness? And guess what? The me inside of you ain't going to want to let loose of the me inside of you. Right? It'll be like my bank account trying to subtract the money that's inside my bank account all by itself. It just doesn't happen. Right? Unless I spend it. Right. So something has to happen. Right? And that comes with the spirit. And it comes with a change in mind. And so let's get into one of the most controversial verses in the Bible. All right. Matthew chapter 5. Now, I say it's controversial, and here's the reason why. A lot of people love Matthew chapter 5. A lot of people within the left of the political sphere love. Matthew chapter 5. And what they love about it is, on its surface, it presumes people doing things for others as a form of godly, godliness. Mm-hmm. But more specifically, they see it as the only form of godliness. You know, there was a battle within the church within the late 1800s. And that battle actually was actually formed the two spheres of the church, the very conservative and the very left. Because what happened was, in the 1800s, a whole bunch of germs, which is crazy considering that our notion of how we understand the Bible nowadays actually comes from a bunch of Germans. A whole bunch of Germans in the 1800s actually looked at the word of God and said, there is no God. And since there is no God, what am I supposed to do with this word of God? If God isn't real, I no longer need him. Why do I no longer need God? In the 1800s, what happened? Why do we no longer need God? Modern medicine happened. 
the industrial revolution happened. Mm -hmm. I no longer need to believe in God because I'm no longer scared of what goes bump in the night. I'm no longer scared of these mass diseases that's going to come out and wipe us out. That's why I had coronavirus so scary to people. They had thought we had gotten to such an advanced age, an advanced technology, an advanced medicine, mm -hmm. that a disease couldn't come out of nowhere and just drop millions, just like that. Mm -hmm. And we had no cure to it. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, according to science, we reached one billion people in around 1860 on planet Earth. We were knocking at 8 billion people. So in the span of about 160 years, we had times eight the population. Why? Modern medicine, the industrial revolution, traveling, the, the borders are no longer borders. And so what happened? It allowed the meanness of people to take hold because what they used to be afraid of and what they used to not know they now knew, and they were no longer afraid of. And here's the irony of it. Who blessed us to have better medicine? Who blessed us to have the knowledge for the Industrial Revolution? It was God. So the very gifts of God was the very thing we used to ratify that there is no God. Wow. Self-idolatry. Taking that which God gave us, just like the pagan, taking the wood that God gave him, carving that piece of wood, mm -hmm. putting a nice little nose on that piece of wood, putting a little blade in that in the little piece of wood's hand, and then saying, this is the God yeah. that gave him this wood. This is the God that gave him the fire. Mm -hmm. This is the God that gave me my wife and children. Silliness. Yeah. Straight yeah. down silliness. And so this is why I say this is controversial. Because when you actually read the Beatitudes, it tells you, get rid of your meanness. Get rid of your youness. And realize, you are destitute. You are a complete and utter destitute. But, be happy. Be happy in your destitute. Let's get into it. All right. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. So, blessed are the poor in spirit. What's poor in spirit mean? Poor in spirit is simple. It's saying that you understand your spirit is not enough. Your spirit is not enough. Your ambitions is not enough. Whatever type of spiritual strength you think you have, whatever mental fortitude you think you have, your mental fortitude comes from your spirit. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Whatever mental fortitude you think you have, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about the Christian. The Christian, the mature Christian realizes it's not enough. The world utterly crushes the people who think they're strong in spirit. That's right. It utterly destroys them. It doesn't even allow them to see salvation. What did Christ say? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the rich man feels like he is self sufficient. That's right. But then he says, but through God, all things are possible. Things are possible. Yeah. So the rich man can't make it through the kingdom of heaven. Just like the camel can make it through the life of the needle. Because <laughs> God can make all things happen. Right. Yeah. But let's get back to the point that the spiritual sufficient person doesn't want the kingdom of heaven. How do we know this? 
How do people feel like they're spiritually sufficient? Horoscopes. How many times have I gone on my Facebook timeline and everybody's on their horoscopes? And now I've discovered that there's more than just, you know, the zodiac signs and all the other signs. There's the lunar sign and the solar sign. And there's the, if you were born, it was five stars over there. And your sun was actually over here, but the moon was over here. Then this means this, and that means that. Somehow, some way, have made some type of sufficiency through some astronomy, astrology, witchcraft. Witchcraft. <laughs> right, right, right? Witchcraft. Self sufficiency, right? right? Because somehow, some way, I believe my life is going to be good because the sun sat here and the moon actually spent this way and the earth sat over here and the big dipper was right there and the little dipper was right here. Now, if I put all that together, put it on the chart, I'm going to be rich by the time I turn 37. <laughs> It. Right? Yep. Some form of self sufficiency. Mm -hmm. What's another form of self sufficiency that we find common? Self admirations. Right? Yep. I see people go, I am strong. I am naked. I am vital. I am worth it. I'm not even saying that those things are wrong. What I am trying to say is for the Christian who assigns your value. Who prescribes what you are? Christian Christ life. Mm -hmm. My value has to come from Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Therefore, my ambition doesn't matter. My ambition should actually be for Christ. Yeah. Yes. Is that what Paul said in 1 Corinthians? I do. And I become like everyone. Why? To win souls. I become like the Jew. I become like the Gentile. He's not saying that he sins like them. What he's saying is he conforms to meet them where they are. Right. Why? To win Christ. His ambition was for Christ and Christ only. Yeah, that's right. So therefore, the only strength, the only sufficiency of spirit I have has to be from Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And on the flip side, if I look at Christ when he preaches his sermon, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Christ came to earth poor in spirit than he ever was. Why? Because Christ was the second of the Godhead. Yeah. He was pure, utter strength and power and spirit. He was the creating force. Mm -hmm. And he comes to this earth in the shell of a man, giving up that spiritual power. Mm. Amen. All right. Who has the kingdom of heaven? Christ does. So you can look and see throughout the Beatitudes what Christ did. And then you can look and see throughout the Beatitudes what you should be doing for Christ. And you can look and see how Christ was the example. Amen. Amen. That's the controversial thing. That's good. People really feel like this thing is here to uplift you and to make you feel happy. But really, the Beatitudes, Christ came and smacked them across the head. They didn't even realize they got smacked. <laughs> You ever been smacked by your mama so fast you didn't even know you were smacked? That happened to me one time. My mom smacked me in my back when I was like 14, boy. And I spent around with my fist in my I had a fist and everything. I didn't realize it was my mama. <laughs> of course I'm not going to punch my mama, but I was in self-defense mode. I, I didn't know. That's how Christ smacked, smacked me so hard. They didn't they even have a chance to ball fist up. They thought it was actually good. <laughs> Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourn, mourning, 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 sadness, severe sadness, literally taking sadness because of the loss of something. What is this loss that we speak of? Is it the loss of a loved one? Not really. Is it the loss of some type of richness? Not really. Is it the loss of self? No, not really. What is it? It's the loss of being holy. Why? It's the loss of of saying that, hey, I am sinful. I mourn because I am sinful. Yeah. I mourn because I can't do what's right by God all the time. That's our mourning. Mm -hmm. If you don't have issue with the fact that you are sinful at times, I question the veracity of your salvation. All right. Amen. There is times where I literally can't go to sleep because I know I did something wrong. I remember one point in time someone said, I don't understand how you're being punished. 
I don't see you losing your job. I don't see you losing S, Y, and Z. And I go, I can't sleep at night. I can't sleep. I can't get peace. I can't get what they call the righteous sleep of the saints. Because I knew I did something wrong and I was unrepentant. Mm -hmm. God chastised me. He did not allow me to be comforted in my sin. I mourned the fact that I was in my sin. Mm -hmm. To the point to where my pride, my pride had to break. And then it had to say, God, forgive me. And then, because I realized how insufficient my spirit was, I said, God, take this away from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes we would go, you know what? God, forgive me. But you still want to be there. Jesus. You still want to hang out with those people. You still want to say those same things. You still want to have those same things. Mm -hmm. You know? You still want to take advantage of the system. Come on now. But then you have to go, God, if this is a sin, deliver me from my sin. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Don't, don't look for forgiveness so you can feel good for right then and there. Mm. And then stay in sin. Yes, yes. That's actually what's so hard for a lot of people who battle homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Because they find so much comfort yeah. in the relationship. Mm -hmm. They find so much comfort in the love. Some people go, oh, well, gay people can't love each other. Oh, yes, they can. They can't definitely love each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us straight up, do not love the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. If we can point love in the wrong direction, then it can still be love. The problem is love is pointing towards the wrong direction. That's right. Mm -hmm. If I love my dog more than I love my child, my love is pointing towards the wrong direction. It still is love. Mm -hmm. So, you have to be mindful of the fact that my love is in the wrong place. What I hold as a potential is in the wrong place. What I hold as, what's the word, what's the word? What I hold as my priorities are in the wrong place. I mourn when my priorities are in the wrong place. I mourn when I don't hold the gospel in its high and utmost place. I mourn when I realize I didn't do what was right by my wife. I mourn when I realized I didn't do what's right about my children. I mourn when I realized that I took advantage of my church. I mourn when I realized that I said something wrong about my pastor. Amen. Right? right? On, so, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What shall I be comforted by? The forgiveness that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, a lot of people see this as mourning for the dead ones. And that, that can be true, but that's not really what this passage is pointing at. It's right. pointing at the fact you're mourning at your separation from God. Yeah. If you feel separation from God, you gotta do something. Amen. Yes. You gotta make it right. Yes. But then I gotta look and see, <laughs> I can't. I'm insufficient. Mm -hmm. I have to rely on Jesus to yes. Christ. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The humble, the ones who can't do with, the ones who don't have the ability to do anything, the ones who have to be humble. Poor people have to be humble. You ever seen a proper poor person? It's the saddest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> don't be prideful and ask for me $2 on the side of the street. <laughs> That's how my flesh feels. Now, mind you, I shouldn't give it the $2. Why? Because clearly it's a dumb fool. <laughs> but it's just a very crazy thing to see. A prideful person asking me for some change. Mm -hmm. Right? Get mad when you get So blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who realize they can't do it for themselves. Aye. Blessed are those who realize that their salvation only comes through the redemption work of Christ. Yes. Christ even humbled himself. Isn't that what Philippians tells us? Yes, that he humbled himself and sought not to be like God, but did the will of God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He humbled himself. He even was endowed with the Holy Spirit to go forth and do his ministry. The second of the Godhood humbled himself so much that the third of the Godhood had to come and empower him to do the ministry. Yeah. That's how humble Christ became. Yes. Praise God. That's how humble we're supposed to become. But guess what? Boy, that meanness of mine. Mean. That, that proudfulness of mine. You don't want to be that humble. When someone says something to me at work, 
I'll give you this. One of the things I can't stand the most is when someone takes credit for what I did. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, boy, you want to talk about somebody want to fight? Spit man, mm. spit hot, spit man. Steam's on off my head. <laughs> now, I did do that stuff, but at the same time, I have to learn how to be humble and allow God to fight my fight. Yeah. Allow God to fight my fight. Yeah. Now here's the thing: Do I have to allow people to just run all over me all the time? Yeah. No. But here's the thing also. If I believe that the people take advantage of me, if I let it happen and it advances the gospel, let it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that what Paul taught the first Corinthians? I believe it was chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Brother is suing brother. Yeah. Church member is suing church member. Yeah. Why won't you just let the events happen for the name of the church? Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. Humble yourself. Amen. Christ humbled himself. Yes. How many of us can really just sit there and just take not having the accolades that we feel like we should have? Christ is God on earth and the Pharisees mock him. He's God on earth and the Romans beat him up. He's God on earth and he's crucified. Not given the due respect that he deserved. But God made sure that they didn't give him the due respect because if they did, he wouldn't be able to sacrifice them the way he did. The mission had to happen. That's right. Can you humble yourself so much that God's will can go forth? God Almighty. Not your will, but God's will be done. Isn't that what Christ said? Yes. Uh -huh. Not my will. Sure. So clearly it shows that Jesus and his flesh actually sort of was like, man, I don't want to do this. Can he pass his cup? I don't want to do it, but he had to say, quick, you will be done. Humbleness, blessed are me. For they shall inherit the earth. Is, did Christ inherit the earth? Yes. Read Revelation. Did Christ inherit the earth? Yes. When he comes back, he comes back with an army riding on a white horse with a yes. name that nobody can read. Mm -hmm. But it says, the son of the living God. And he comes forth and his enemies are arrayed against him. Mm. And his tongue lashes out and slays his enemies. That's right. So That's Revelation 19. That's right. His tongue comes out and slashes his enemies. The angels don't even fight. He arranged the angels to watch. <laughs> Jesus comes forth and destroys yeah. his enemies. Yes. Punish. Why? Because he humbled himself on earth. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. This actually goes into the morning piece. Do you really hunger to be righteous with God? Do you hunger to do what's right by God? Does your prayer actually end, have somewhere inside of it, hey God, let me be right by you? Or is your prayer, God, you know, I got this bill, I can't figure out how to pay it. God, you know, I, I see the prayer at your bass, and I, I want to be like your bass. I want to have some lands and some riches. The Cadillac and the Phantom too. <laughs> I want to have them things. I want to eat steak all day. I want some lamb chops. Yeah. That's that's me speaking. Boy, I love me some lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, is your prayer saturated with you? Is your prayer saturated with asking God for things for this life? All right. Because man, we sure do see people pray a lot for this life. Now, here's the thing: there's nothing wrong with praying for this life. God said, I'm your father. I will give you your needs. Mm -hmm. And the righteous, he said, he'll give them their desire. Mm -hmm. Thing is, though, what a lot of people don't understand is the righteous desire what? Righteousness. righteousness. That's what he gives the righteous. He gives them righteousness because that's what they desire. The people who are walking after God, God gives them the right to walk after him. That's what the righteous desire. The righteous doesn't desire the phantom that's, that's, that has the tent, and then when you press the button on the console, the door flips up like this, and then the, the console light shines out, and when I put my new balance out there, it just shines on that thing. That's not what the righteous desire. I ain't gonna lie, I desire it, but it probably isn't the righteousness that I desire. Right? Amen. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. This is not just somebody who says, oh, you know, I, I would like to be right by God. Mm. Oh, I know I'm shacking up. 
I know that's not right by God, but I would like to be right by God. Man, this economy. Man, this economy doesn't allow me to do what's right by God. I still got to pay this bill. Rich high. Taxes banging me across the head. How can I be right by God when I keep getting taxed for everything? Can't even buy my cigarettes and add two more dollars in the box. How am I to be right by God? Too expensive. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst out of righteousness. Guess what a hungry person is going to do? They're going to eat that food. Guess what a thirsty person is going to do? As soon as they get a chance, they're going to drink that water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who seek righteousness first, always. Always. It's the number one priority. You must do what's right by God. Blessed are those who are righteous. Now, do our righteousness come from Christ? Yes. Our righteousness comes from Christ. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness that's provided by Christ. Christ is our propitiation. Christ gives us the ability to be right in front of the eyes of the Father. Christ is the reason why the Holy Spirit comes and endows us to do those things which is right by God. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst after that righteousness from Christ. Like Romans 3. Romans 3 teaches us that Christ is actually the showing of God's righteousness of how he forebodes sin from the beginning all the way to the end. Yeah, he is the righteousness of God. Yeah. But here's the double entendre. The double entendre is this. Christ is our righteousness, but we must behave as if our righteousness depended on us. Mm -hmm. We're servants, are we not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? right? Amen. God is only Christ is Lord. We are servants. Service. The servants do what the Lord said. That's right. Amen. Right? Now you go to John chapter 15. He said, You are my friends unless you if you do the things I commanded you to do. He also tells the disciples, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends because you know what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said, I no longer call you servants. You didn't say, hey, you made servants. Mm -hmm. No, it's like my employees. I don't say, hey, employee John, come do hither. Say, hey, man, John, what's up? Can you do this for me? It's a courtesy thing. I'm not going to sit there and go, employee 4526, can you go forth and do X, Y, and Z? No, I say, hey, Heather, come on, let's do this. All right? Mm -hmm. So, bless those who hunger, go and do what's right by God, regardless of what's in front of you, regardless of the economy. Regardless of who's in office, mm -hmm. regardless if you like it or not, All right. Come on, trust man. and obey. Trust, and, trust obey. and obey. Yeah. And if you can't trust, guess what? Obey. You trust in the relator. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Abraham. All right. Abraham got told, hey, get up from where you're a prince and go move all the way over here. It's about 300, 400 some odd miles. And I'm going to give you a land that you didn't even know about. He trusted mm -hmm. and he obeyed. I'm not sure which one came first, but I know he obeyed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Do what's right. Amen. As if you doing what's right was the way you got saved. Even though you know it's not. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Merciful. Mercy. Why should I be merciful? They came up against me. That was. Lamech, Genesis chapter 4, Lamech said that the man came and injured me, so therefore I killed him, mm -hmm. and the very protection of Cain, God should give me sevenfold. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be merciful. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're prideful. Yeah. I have to look back and look at my former fathering of my children, and I have to look and say, did I give them discipline because they needed it, or did I give them discipline because they hurt my pride? That's just something I have to deal with sometimes. Is it that they misbehaved and they made me look bad, so therefore I popped them? Or is it that they misbehaved and they needed a dis discipline, they needed to be popped and I popped them? That's two different things. I should be merciful unto those who I can be merciful to. Somebody took $20 from you, never paid you back. It's been five years. Let it go. Let it go. A hundred dollars. Let it go. Amen. That's right. I mean, in the past five years, because of the economy, that hundred dollars ain't nothing but seven dollars now. 
I mean, are you going to be happy with the $7 we are giving back to you? No. <laughs> no. You're still going to be upset. Somebody said we're going to take you on that date. I'm going to take you on that date. Guess what? Let's go. Sorry. Being merciful. 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 Allows us to show the love of God to the sinner. Mm -hmm. When we are merciful to those who come up against us, and when we are proven correct, when we are proven vindicated, we being merciful shows that God has changed us and that they also can be changed. Yeah. Christ was merciful. Amen. How do we know Christ is merciful? Even on the earth, Christ is merciful. What did Christ tell, tell Papa? I can call down legions of angels. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. nuke this world. Boom. Blast it. Yeah. Yeah. It only took two angels to blast Simon Gamar off the place. Right. Legions is thousands upon thousands. What happens if thousands upon thousands of angels come down? Boom. Hiroshima. Knock us out. And they, they don't even, they pale in comparison to the power of angels. Mm -hmm. So Christ, Christ sat there, and what he did was he was merciful to the people who were going to slaughter him. Mm -hmm. And he was merciful to them because he knew it was part of God's plan. Can you be merciful to the people when you know it's part of God's plan? Or better yet, can you be merciful to the people even when you don't know it's part of God's plan? <laughs> Can you be merciful to the person that smacks you across the face? Mm -hmm. Literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. Or do you gotta punch him back? <laughs> I heard this one rapper say, he called himself a Christian rapper, he said, try Jesus, don't try me. I broke hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, supposed true. Christian rapper, but uh, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Right? God gives us mercy. Yes. God doesn't punish us exactly when we deserve to be punished. Right? Come on. Right? How many times have you done a sin that you realize, uh oh, so, uh oh, I didn't I didn't get what I deserved. How many times did you do a lie and that lie actually didn't get you caught up? Mm -hmm. And the flesh it sort of looked like it worked. Guess what? That's God being merciful. God is true. You can't buy by a lie. But he's merciful in that he prescribed that sin to the punishment that Christ took for us. Right. right? Thank you, Lord. Can you do the things that's required for you to do that is the will of God, for the will of God, even when it goes against the will of you? <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart. Are you pure in heart? Am I pure in heart? Are we naturally pure in heart? No. Because I think about me all the day long. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been wrestling with for the past week or so is how big of a TV do I want sitting inside my living room? <laughs> I've been thinking about that thing, boy. It's been weighing, it's been weighing on my heart. <laughs> and I had to sit there and think to myself, boy, if the gospel weighed on my heart as much as this TV did, <laughs> I might have gotten somebody saved down the streets this week. <laughs> I'm for real. I've been saying to myself, I took the little Amazon app and I measured, I measured the 65 inch versus the 75 inch above the fireplace. And I was doing all type of science and I was measuring the angle and I even broke out the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared, doing the pot news. And guess what? I said that thought to myself, boy, if I would have took the gospel and said, how can I go down the street and just apply it to somebody? Came and brought some food to somebody little lady was hungry, sit down and take the Bible out and sit down and talk with them while they ate. Mm -hmm. You know, take the wine of them, pick them up out of that dirt, and say, hey man, stop drinking this wine right fast. Let's talk about this word. <laughs> if I would have applied that very same energy that way, maybe, maybe. I would have won somebody to Christ. Maybe. Blessed is the pure in heart. I'm not trying to say that one of the TV wasn't pure. What I am trying to say is the pure in heart. Those after the things of God first and always. Amen. David was considered to be pure in heart. What did David want to do? David wanted to advance the kingdom of God. He wanted to advance Israel. And we read the book of Psalms. He always says, keep Israel in your mind. Forgive the sins of Israel. Expand Israel. Why? For your sake. Moses, 
Moses was feared part. Why? Because when God said, I will wipe out all of Israel, start everything over with you. Moses said, God, spare Israel for your name's sake. Can you say that? Can you say, hey, God, spare my enemy for your name's sake? Spare the person who tried to kill me. Spare the person who assaulted me. Spare the person who sexually assaulted me. Spare that person for your sake. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Pure in heart. I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about you, Father God. I'm thinking about the example that your son set forth, Father God. Pure in heart. Christ purely and heart went to the cross. It was crushed, Isaiah 53. Yes. It's crushed. Completely and utterly annihilated. Father God crushed the Son of God. Yeah. Purely. Why? So that you could be viewed as having a pure heart. Mm. So that you could be viewed to have righteousness. Mm. And so that you can actually obtain some form of a pure heart. Your heart ain't gonna be as pure as it can be when you cross the other side of Jordan. But on this side of the this side of the line, with the Holy Spirit, you can have pureness of heart. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus. You can have righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right? Praise God. Blessed them for they shall see God. I want to see God. Guess who else wants to see God? Sinners want to see God. How do sinners want to see God? Sinners want to see God in the way they imagine God. Right? How many you know pure sinners when they die, you see their family go, man, I know Pookie's up there playing basketball with Kobe in heaven right now. I don't think Pookie's playing basketball with Kobe in heaven. I, if I had to take a guess, you know, I'm not saying I'll put my life on it, I'm just saying if I had to take an educated guess, Pookie's not playing basketball with Kobe in heaven. If I had to take, if I had to take a guess, you know, your grandfather, who was known for being a rolling stone and never repenting. You know he never repented. Guess what? He ain't playing chess with, he ain't playing chess with missionary Paul up there. He's just, it, it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. Sinners want to see God on their Time. point of view, on their terms. Mm -hmm. But it's only the pure heart that's actually going to see God. Why? Because we understand that the word of God is the only thing that describes to us the true God. Mm -hmm. And the pure heart follows the word of God. The prideful heart wants to define the word of God per their life. Mm -hmm. While the pure heart defines their life by the word of God. Say it again. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I will. <laughs> the prideful wants to define the word of God by their life. The pure heart knows that I must define my life by the word of God. All right. I'm not going to lie. That's the only thing that had me. Look at what I was doing with my family and go, I got to change something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? I know I keep throwing this testimony at me, but the only thing I can really talk about for a shorty is this word in me. Yeah. That's good. Really good. And I talk about me in the light of this word because I know this word dictates what I did. It tells me what I did that was a sin, and it tells me what I did that was right. Yeah. And it tells me how God forgave me for the sins through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can you say the same in your life? Yeah. It's God. yeah. I'm not saying I'm a perfect example. No, I'm not. I cussed out three people this week in my head while I was driving. <laughs> in the back of my head, boy, it was not cotton picking. It was not. It was not that. It was not darn it. It wasn't. It cut me off. The back of my head, boy, it's a strong language. Just like that. But thank God for forgiveness. Because you go down to chapter 5, boy, it talks about anger and how you even think angrily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you even call somebody a fool. You, yeah. you liable to murder. That's it. And guess what? I almost wanted to run back to somebody. This would have been murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell the truth. But thank God because yeah. he purifies my heart. Yeah. Yeah. He brings on my heart with the spirit of his Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Yes. He gives me his word which allows me to Jesus. read and ascertain. The Holy Spirit magnifies his word in my life. Amen. You want to know why when you get in trouble and the word is not coming to you? You ain't reading it. Yeah. All right. You want to read both though? You want to read men's health though? It's like, man, you know, if I would have took this testosterone supplement here, I would have been able to lift this. <laughs> or, you know, if I would have got that Beijing that's doing my head right fast, that girl would have said hi to me. 
Yeah, that's how some men yeah. think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's how some men think. Some women, right, they get into a situation and they find things like, he only said that because I was a woman. Might be true. Might be true. Might not be true. But what is true is, blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who appear in heart, that they'll see God. You know, we take things as offense because of who may be. We should take things as an assurance through the word of God. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. When I mean, they say sons, obviously they also mean daughters. Blessed are those, blessed are the peacemakers, they'll be called children of God. The easiest way to see this is blessed is Christ. Mm -hmm. Is not Christ the greatest of the peacemakers? Yes. Is he not the greatest of the peacemakers? Yes. yes. Right? Melchizedek. Right, came from Salem, the place of peace. When Chesedek is actually named means the Prince of Peace, Hebrews tells us that Christ comes to the model of Melchizedek. What's one of the titles that he has is the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. How does he become the Prince of Peace? He saved us from the wrath we couldn't escape, and that is the wrath of a holy God. Yes. Right. He made peace, made peace with peace. us yes. to God. Yes. He didn't make peace with us to the white man. Uh, go mm -hmm. ahead. <laughs> now his work extends to us to have peace with the people that we don't want to have peace with, mm -hmm. or the peace that we need to have with other people. Mm -hmm. But what he ultimately did was he made peace with us, the Father God. Why? The Father God was going to throw us in hell. Yep. He was going to do it. Yep. Because his righteousness, his holiness dictated so. Yep. If he was going to be holy, all sinners have to go to hell. Yep. But through his peaceful sacrifice, he brought us back to the Father. Amen. Right? For they shall be called the sons of God. The Son of God is the greatest peacemaker this world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you actually go down a little bit further, and you go down here to verse 43, you see, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Right? That's, that's actually in the Mosaic Law. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that they may be sons of your Father who is, in, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For He makes His sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Mm -hmm. Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. What is he saying is, sometimes making peace is at your authority. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's, it's, hey, I see two people fighting, I break it up, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it's, I let this person take advantage of me. Why? For the peace. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, my brother stayed with me. He said, he couldn't pay rent. Guess what? For the sake of peace. Okay. Sometimes my boss will say something off the chain, off, off the wall. And guess what? I keep my mouth shut. Why? For peace. All right. Sometimes I even look. My paycheck was a little low. And I did not do what I wanted to do, which was kick and scream and yell at them like, you better have my money. Mm -hmm. No. I peacefully waited. I waited to see if they was going to fix it. And if they didn't fix it, then I would put it in and say, hey, I need you to fix this for me. Mm -hmm. Even though I know that bills from the do. Mm -hmm. Even though I know I got children to mm -hmm. But if it was going to advance the gospel, I would hate that money. Why would I hate that money? Because mm -hmm. I know that my substance comes from God. Yeah. It does not come from a paycheck. Yeah. If to keep peace, you must be persecuted. To keep peace, you must be reviled for the name of God. You have to suck it up, Buttercup. That's what the majority of that's what the short Christian understands. That's what the servant of God understands. Christ told them, if they came after me, they're clearly going to come after you. Mm -hmm. Keep the peace. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that, especially when your husband is talking you sideways, especially when your wife is talking on the side of your neck. Especially when your brother 
is saying something that you don't like and your sister is saying something that you don't like, can you keep the peace? That's it. Can y'all keep the peace? Yes. I ain't talking to nobody <laughs> today. <laughs> Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Christ the persecuted, the kingdom of heaven is his. Can you do the same? Can you be persecuted? You walk inside your high school for a while and see what happens. Right. Walk to your job for a while and see what happens. Matter of fact, on lunch break, don't talk about the game. Talk about the Bible. Uh, see what happens. Mm -hmm. On lunch break, don't talk about the next episode of The View. Talk about the Bible. <laughs> Matter of fact, if someone brings up something that they feel like they're going to agree with them with, actually disagree with them and show them the word and see what happens. <laughs> Can you take that persecution? Can you take that exercise? Can you take the loss of friends? I lost friends when Trump first ran for office because I was so anti-Trump. They thought the only thing I talked about was political stuff. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, my wife can, can attest to this. Mm -hmm. But when I started putting Bible verses and explanation of Bible verses and sermons on my Facebook, I lost a whole heap of friends. Which one was righteous in the eyes of God. Was it that I said, hey, Trump don't care about you, he's a millionaire, millionaires don't care about us? Or was it, I said, hey, do what's right by God, here's the scripture that says do what's right by God. Amen. It's the latter. Right? If you're persecuted because you did something wrong, so what? You did it. You did it. You deserved it. You got what you deserved. Mm -hmm. But if you're persecuted because you did what's right by God, mm. the kingdom of heaven is yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. And here's another thing. I have a little point that I sort of want you to see here. It tells us the ultimate reward comes at the end. It is the new heaven. It is the new earth. It is the kingdom of heaven, the things that cannot be seen. The reward that God promised us is the reward of the things that cannot be seen here and now. Mm -hmm. The sinner wants a reward of what they can see. Yes. The immature Christian wants a reward of what they can be, what they can see. Right now. They want the new house all the time. They want the jewelry. They want the Louis. They want the Gucci. Mm -hmm. The Hermes and all the other stuff. <clears throat> I just found out what Hermes was a couple of days ago. <laughs> they want that stuff. Yeah. Why do they want it as a reward? Because they were self-sufficient. Yeah. They did what's right by their own accord. When we look at what the what the Beatitudes is really telling us, it's saying that allow your mind to understand how depraved and how utterly needful you are. And then recognize your needs in the light of Christ. And then realize that Christ turns your needs into holiness. Because blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Right? <laughs> Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Blessed are those who are meek and humble. Blessed are those. Yes. Blessed are those that were weak. Right? When Paul says, I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me, he ain't talking about playing basketball. <laughs> right? Yeah. Steph Curry put that on his sneakers. Yeah. You think Christ is going to think Christ died so you can shoot a three pointer better than anybody else? You think Christ died so you can have five zeros in the bank account? No, he didn't. What he was saying was, you can do anything within the kingdom of heaven to advance the kingdom of heaven, to be in the kingdom of heaven, and to honor the God of the kingdom of heaven. Do your mind think this way? Does the sinner carnal mind think this way? Do we always think this way? Sure enough. Nope. I don't think that way. Well, I sure do want the 2024 Kia Carnival DX. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to get ready to close. I'm going to close. I'm going to close on this. Okay, now you might sound about to close. <laughs> right? Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, false in the mind, and rejoice in the land for the reward of great in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. When I look at the prophets, this is what I understand about the prophets. 
Moses' body is hidden and cannot be found. According to Jewish tradition, the prophet Isaiah's body was sawed in half by a king who was not happy by his prophecy. Mm -hmm. Elijah was persecuted almost all his days. Eli had to watch his sons perish because of their, because of their unrighteousness. Right? Jeremiah spoke and not a soul was saved. And he had to sit there and watch Babylon take his people away. Can you be righteous if you see God, if you see that people will take your people away? Can you be righteous when you see people take everything you hold dear away? Can you hold on to the faith when everything you put your hand towards fails? Mm -hmm. Can you do it? Knowing that your ultimate reward is actually in heaven. It's not here. It's not now. Praise God. All right? Happy. That's what blessed means, happy. Can you be happy when nothing in the common mind says you should be happy? Jesus. Right? That's the Bible they had since Genesis 6. We're looking for rest. Rest against what? Rest against this worry world. May us hold on to Christ and be happy when we realize we're poor in spirit. May we be happy we realize that we're humble and we can't do anything. Can we be happy when we know that we need to move even more and more with Christ? That's all I got. I'm going to shut up now. Love you. Pastor.